or our <coughs> his ability to rule us. We said we're no longer under you. So we had to come up with our own government. We did, we, and the name of it was the Articles of Confederation. It had one branch, it had a legislative branch. And we were talking about in the last few videos the weakness of it and how they couldn't raise taxes. And, and we ended up saying the country realized this was not going to work, that that form of government was going to work. And so they called the uh, Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. And today we're going to look at um, what came out of that convention. And they kind of redid the whole government. And they created a United States Constitution. This is the outline that says how our government is going to be set up. That we are under this authority of the U.S. Constitution today. The first, on these first two, you will find our vocabulary. The vocabulary here is essential for you to really understand the ideas behind it, and we're going to go over this extensively in class. So make, I've already given you the definitions for these, so make sure when you come to class, you come with your three by five note cards with the word on there and the definition, and then we'll work from there. What are the ideas that the Constitution is based on? Anytime you make something or create something, it is based on an idea. And so the same way when, some, when email was invented, it was the idea of being able to quickly um, send messages or texting, send messages back and forth. So from the ideas actually come things um, or movements or actions. And so it all really, the genesis of it all is the thinking. And there are some basic thoughts that throughout history that the founders or the writers of the Constitution. Ms. Warbaugh students, can you help me come on to the office now? Uh, Ms. Warbaugh students, come on to the office. Um, that it, they used as these ideas to form the basis with which they were going to set up our gov form of government. And one of the things is, and we will look at these in class. But just so you're familiar with them, the Magna Carta, the English Bill of Rights, the Enlightenment Movement during the 1700s, who included John Locke and his, what he wrote about how, what he saw the purpose of government, and um, the Baron, who talked about what laws, what was the purpose of laws. And so a lot of the ideas that our founding fathers had came from these writings and, before us. The Constitution. The Constitution, from those writings came certain principles like republicanism, unlimited government, federalism, separation of powers, checks and balances. And so these are the principles that came from those writings on the previous slide. And so what they did when they met, they took those principles, these ideas, and they said, well, how can we make these ideas true or a part of our government. And as they talked about it and worked through how do you make these ideas part of our government, they came up with this. And these are the parts of our Constitution that establish and create the government. And our government is based on these thoughts and these principles. So it's these principles that drive the formation of our government. And as in anything, as a book or anything, there's always an introduction, and that is called the preamble, the part of our Constitution, is, which is the introduction. And then the Constitution is divided into articles, and there are seven of them. And each article talks about either a different um, function of the government or what the government, um, how it is supposed to run. So for example, the legislative branch, that is the Congress, that's your senators and that's your representatives, executive branch, the president, judicial branch, the federal court system, how are states going to um, work with each other? Remember in the Articles of Confederation, each state kind of did their own thing, and so they didn't really have to cooperate. This is how states are going to work together. 
Then you have, um, how would you change the Constitution? As, as this country continues to thrive, things are gonna change. Change is inevitable. So how do you change to adapt the Constitution to what is going on? Um, the nat nat national supremacy that the Constitution is above all other governments? And how do you change? What is the process for ratifying and changing things in the Constitution? Then there are the amendments, the actual changes to the Constitution. So this is, it's, this is the skeleton. Like in our body, our bones hold up our whole body and let the other, and let the individual parts work. That is what this is. This is the skeleton, how, what basically set up the government. And then under each of these, the different branches all start working on their own. The preamble. You will be memorizing this. We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. We already had a union, but now a more perfect union. So better unity, establish justice, doing things right, and to assure domestic tranquility, peace <coughs> in, in our country, provide for the common defense, the protection of the, of the people in the country, and to promote the general welfare, to establish a nation that really supports the goodness of, of how people should live and um, support people's ability to live well. Um, and to secure the blessings of liberty. So the, the ability to choose and be free. To ourselves and our posterity means our descendants. Um, do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States. It basically says, why did we b make this government the way we did? For all these reasons. Establish justice, a better union, tranquility, the common good. So these were all the reasons why they re-looked at the old government and decided to create it as they, they did and as the government we presently work under. Now, we're going to go through the, quickly through, the, through each part of the government and we'll be working a lot more of, in detail with this in class. But your legislative branch, that is Congress. It consists of the Senate. Ms. Rohrbach, students, eight students, please come to student services. Ms. Rohrbach, students, please come to student services. You have the Senate, and it tells you how many senators you have. You have two from each state, and they represent the state, what the qualifications are. Then you have the House of Representatives, um, the, how long they serve, and it's based on population, and we will get into that. Um, the Senate approves treaties, confirms nominations. If the President says, I want this person to be in the Supreme Court, the Senate confirms it, and it passes laws. The House is in charge of the money and how you spend it. it can, the House is the one that impeaches federal officials. Right now there is a movement to impeach President Obama. The last impeached president was President Clinton. And it also passes laws and legislation. Down, then that's one branch. The next branch is the executive branch, and that consists of the president and his cabinet. And these are the duties of the president. He nominates people to the court system. He vetoes laws. He's in charge of the military. He can pardon. He gives a speech to Congress once a year. Speech to Congress, presidents of cabinet, and the U.S. Supreme Court. It's called the State of the Union every January. He recommends laws, legislation, and he executes and he makes sure that the laws are carried out. The last branch is the judicial branch. It has the United States District, Appellate, Supreme Courts, or Supreme Court. And it's the whole idea of the courts have a, it's part of their responsibility to review the laws. So those are the first three parts. These parts all have a ch what we call a check and a balance. If the legislative, if Congress goes and passes crazy laws, the president has the power to veto and say, this law is crazy, you guys are nuts, this has to be changed, this is not for the common good or welfare. And so if the president and the executive branch pass a law 
if the Supreme Court reviews the law and says this doesn't go with the Constitution, then the law can become 